So the next part is let's review the quiz. A lot of the problems that the class didn't get. <coughs> okay, so let's go to the quiz. I'm going to show a little different format today, and that's to show you how did the class do on problems. Now, in general, the class is doing much better. Before, there were, I believe, 13 problems on the first quiz, where the class did below 70% on this one. It was eight problems. So the whole key is how do I, you know, bunch together more right answers. And the thing that was actually kind of surprising is that you tend to get the easier problems wrong. For example, this one, 200 is considered an optimal number of samples for a sampling survey. That was out of the lecture, and it's uh, the answer is yes. If it's much higher, you tend to get repeating patterns. That's why 200 is considered to be optimal if you have no idea how many samples you would need. And so all this other stuff, variance too high, you need much more to be certain. And that's the thing, you can have too much data once patterns start repeating, then the extra data is just wasted effort. And it's not too much work, but not too little. How do you know? It doesn't talk about how much work you have to do. Uh, next question. Again, uh, directly out of the uh, lecture, and that's ordinals. Things put in order, like what do you like best, second, third, fourth, fifth? You can't have 20 items. First of all, how do you tell the difference? What distinguishes 15th place and 16th place? And not only that, but you get mixed up. You lose track of things. And then you just don't want to go back and start all over again and fix it. Likert scale is what you're typically used to. A yes or no question doesn't give you much information because it's just absolute. There's no granularity to it. And the question started with emotion. Nobody got fooled by that one. You're supposed to be naturally unbiased and emotions bias you. The lowest price I can charge is likely to be based on you want to make a profit. Now, the two answers that most of you went after is perception of the uh, value from my customers. The problem of why picking uh, perception is if I'm selling for $10, the perception of value might only be $5. I can't sell it for $5. So I need a cost plus a profit. Now, it's not always 50% margin. For example, aircraft carriers cost like a billion dollars. They make $300 million profit on it. It's still pretty hefty, but definitely not a 50% margin. Uh, the equilibrium point, supply and demand. Some of you may have remembered that curve, which is a good thing. Unfortunately, it's not the right answer. Equilibrium point means that's the optimal number to operate at and that's why companies use it however that doesn't mean that you can't sell it at a lower price or go higher it just means it's going to be less efficient but that's not the lowest price i can charge i'll be bach <laughs> is ceo of a robotics firm um you can read the rest of the question but what it comes down to is if you look at the product lecture, there was that grid that showed you what kind of products companies like to do. Each of these topic areas has a basic concept. And the basic concept of a product is, number one, <laughs> uh, what features do customers want? And number two, are they willing to pay for it? And so... If you remember, the big issue is customers want everything and they don't want to have to pay for it. And so the easiest thing to do that has the least amount of risk and why companies do it all the time is have line extensions. For example, if you go into the soup aisle and look for chicken soup, there's chicken soup, low sodium chicken soup, organic chicken soup, cage free chicken soup, and there are just 20 permutations of chicken soup. And so it's easier to do a line extension because you know you already have a captive audience that's interested in doing something. 
So Terminator XL is a line extension. Excess is a new um, application because you're talking about chemical spills instead of just oil. Uh, focus high risk areas such as states along the Keystone Pipeline. That's a market segmentation issue. Um, how do you know that's going to be successful? And not only that, it's a kind of, um, lower the prices on Terminator to spur sales. And that's something we want to avoid in general. And the problem is, is that once you start in, to get into price wars, uh, it's hard to keep up. Uh, let's see, VP of Marketing, Noah Vale, believes that when the world's largest chip maker, Intel, is in a ton of trouble. Now, the key words in this question is profits and growth. They want, I mean, profits and revenue. They want growth and profits and revenue. And so, therefore, your move should impact both. And this is why you want new products. Well, Bovine says that they're not yielding well enough, so they want to reduce manufacturing costs. Well, that reduced costs, so that helps your profit, but it doesn't help your revenue. Lou Pohl, Intel has lots of patents, let's just go sue people. Well, you don't know if that's going to work or not. Uh, EVA destruction, new products, and that's what helps your profits and your revenue. So, uh, half the class got that right. And drew a blank. Uh, we need another round of layoffs. That's going to make us lean or agile. What, why do they lay people off? Reduce costs. So for all intents and purposes, this answer is the exact same as that answer. And that's part of the gamesmanship that you play. Uh, with multiple choice tests, there are two answers that are close to the same. Uh, they're probably both wrong. First movers. Now... You have to look at the wor wording here. Lee supports the statement. The first movers do not have the advantage they once did. And part of it is the internet. And this also came out of the lecture. Uh, the internet uh, naturally has lowered the barrier. Nobody has a monopoly on information anymore. You can find quality around the world. You can find suppliers all around the world. And so being a first mover, you don't have any of those advantage. On the other hand, in certain cases, if you're going into a totally new field, no people have to learn. The information isn't out there and everything else. And so a learning curve still exists. So actually, uh, that was the number one answer based on what everybody answered. Uh, I have a product that requires intensive distribution. This is straight out of uh, the distribution lecture. And that intensive distribution means that you're logistics driven, that you have to supply a lot of stuff, like toilet paper. The quiz itself, uh, this is, shows the distribution for the curve. Now, the high score was actually 90, and they got curved up to 99. And so again, when you have a high lead score, it pretty much shows that it's doable. There's one thing that disturbs me about this distribution and scores and everything else. And that's the look at the average time. You have 60 minutes to do the quiz and you finished in 35. Uh, that alarms me. <laughs> that's that you're rushing through the quiz. You've got an hour, take your time. And not only that, but a lot, those short questions are typically knowledge questions. Go back to the lecture. Take the, I mean, leave it for the end, but take the time out to go look it up. And you could have picked up like three or four extra questions. And that's a lot when you only have 20 problems because that's like a 20-point swing. So for those of you who want to do better, that's my only tip at this point. Anyway, good luck to everyone on your final projects as we start winding this class down to the end.